Hey guys, Christopher Green. I'm doing a few videos today. I've got a lot of content. I want to talk about flat earth. And this is something I've had zero interest in, zero interest at all, until I saw the blanket censorship. Until I saw the disinfo and the misinformation being put out by companies like Walt Disney Company and mainstream personalities. And I noticed things like when you search it in a search engine, all you get is misinformation. You don't even get real critical thought on it. So I started researching, I started looking into it. More importantly, I, st I started studying scripture, literal scripture. I revisited Genesis, for example. And I want to read to you what it says about the firmament, flat earth. And then I want to talk a little bit about these misinformation propaganda campaigns being released by mainstream uh, YouTube personalities like Logan Paul to discredit the truth potentially, and also others that are being used to discredit the conspiracy theory movement, people like Shane Dawson. All of these people work for the same entities, and my video editor noticed this, have the same video editor. It's the same editor because they're all a part of the same Hollywood studio in uh, Los Angeles, and they're using the same techniques and the same propaganda tactics. Take it from a guy who is a student of propaganda and is literally an expert. I've been studying this for more than a decade now, and this is the messaging putting out, being put out by your government and mainstream media institutions. Again, I wasn't even interested in this until I saw the blanket censorship, which tells me there's truth to it. Tells me that they're panicking. They're in panic mode, and they don't want us to have real tangible information. More importantly, they don't want you to think critically about it. See, we're in the information age. There's so, in, so much information, they can't shut down individual ideas. What they can do is muddy the waters. And this is what the tactic is. This is why Logan Paul just did a video on Flat Earth. It's why Shane Dawson just did a series of videos on conspiracy theories. It's to discredit the real truth, real independent critical thinking, and really uh, the scientific process. Isn't that what critical thinking is? Investigating ideas and, and then seeing it to verify if, it, if it's actual fact. In factual information. So let's revisit uh, Genesis, because a lot of people have missed this. We talked about this in studio. And I'm going to read to you, this is from the King James Version, the exact biblical wording and text. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep. The face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. Light and darkness. He divided it. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. So the evening and the morning were the first day. That was day one. Then God said, let there be a firmament. Firmament. Go look this up. What is a firmament? The firmament is heaven. Let me read that again. Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters. In the middle of the waters. Let's read that one more time. Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters. And let it divide the waters from the waters. So there's a firmament. And it's dividing water from water. Thus God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. And it was so. Let me read that paragraph again and study it very closely. Then God said, let there be a firmament. The firmament is the heaven. That's the, that's the heaven, the stars, the sun, the moon. And in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. Thus God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. Two sets of water. So we have the firmament, we have the water below it of which God creates land and planet earth. The firmament is the heavens, the stars, the sun, the moon, all within our own atmosphere. And above that is more water. A lot of people don't catch this. It's more water. Water, firmament, water. Let's read that again. Then God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. Thus God made the firmament, and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. And it was so. And God called the firmament heaven. 
So again, just like I said, the firmament is heaven. Below are the waters. That's where the land was created. It talks about it in a minute. That's planet Earth. In the firmament, you've got the heavens, the stars, the sun, the moon. And above that, you've got another water uh, level, uh, more water. So the evening and the morning were the second day. Then God said, let the waters under the heavens be gathered together into one place and let dry land appear. I mentioned that. And it was so. And God called the dry land earth and the gathering together of the waters he called seas. And God saw that it was good. So I'll leave it there. But basically, let's reemphasize. Again, take, a, take your opinion out of the equation on flat earth for a moment. Just take it out. If you're a Christian, listen to what I just read to you. Listen to the holy book. That was the biblical scripture from Genesis in the very beginning. A lot of people miss, miss this. Those are the exact, that's the exact biblical text. What does it tell us? Again, let's uh, reemphasize. There's a firmament that was created on day two. That's the heavens. That's where God is. That's the sun and the moon and the stars being used for navigation, testimony to God, signs, weather. There's a couple different things that it talks about. Below that is water of which land appeared and was created by God. That's planet Earth. So you've got that there, the firmament above it, and above that you also have water. Water, firmament, firmament water. Water, firmament, water. Study this yourself. Don't take my word for it. That is actually, in reality, what the Bible says. So what does that mean? When I read that to you, did it conjure up a sphere? I mean, honestly, just I'm not even telling you what the answer is. Did it conjure a sphere? Did you know any of this before watching this video? Most of you, probably not. A lot of you, probably yes. I'm probably preaching to the choir, to my own audience, because you guys are very educated in this area. I didn't conjure up an image of a sphere. In fact, I find it interesting that there's water above the heavens. You we'll also have to keep in mind that this is pre-Noah, and this is pre-flood. So the continents might have looked a lot different. The landmass would look a lot different. The whole stasis of this eternal beginning, just like we see in Revelation, the eternal state of not really an ending, but the eternal state through the tribulation and all these kinds of things and the coming of Christ. This is what is actually described. So when I hear, let's go back to Logan Paul and these people say, say things like, well, I don't trust anything, and they're discrediting. I don't trust NASA. I don't, dis I don't trust, you know, means, and he's making fun of it. And I see these giant misinformation campaigns to muddy the waters, all of this disinfo. I see it scrubbed from the internet. It tells me that there's something here that they don't want you to know. It tells me that mainstream science, NASA, and more importantly, our government powers are panicking. So they're hiring through the same companies that they own, because there's only six companies, by the way, companies like Walt Disney that own all of the media. It's the same mainstream media. In fact, Walt Disney is now buying Fox, Fox News, right? The conservative alleged giant. It's all the same. It all, it's all under the same darn pyramid of Satan, okay? And uh, the point is, they're panicking, and they don't want you to know. There's a reason we're seeing so much information on flat Earth and why... It, look... If it's a wild conspiracy theory, why do they need to discredit it? If it's a wild conspiracy theory and it isn't the truth, and no one's going to believe it because they're smart enough to think on their own, why do they need to discredit it? Why do they need... And these same people, keep, keep in mind, Logan Paul, Disney is the parent company. I'm pretty sure he gets a check from Walt Disney. Why would they then put out these misinformation campaigns? I mean, ask yourself these logical questions. I think we know the answer, and I think we know the reason. That's it. I'm going to keep the video very short. Read it for yourself. Pick up the holy book. That was the King James Version. Read about the firmament, the water above, and the water below. And then, you know, what do you see? How is the Holy Spirit speaking to you? What do you think? I'm not, and by the way, I'm not in closing. I'm not saying the earth is flat. I'm not saying that. I honestly had no interest. I think I had a one person on years ago on Flat Earth just because I wanted to hear what they said. And I was like, eh, you know, I just kind of wrote it off. I actually think there's some truth here, though, because of the cover-up. <laughs> because I'm seeing this vast propaganda campaign being run at a very super high level. And again, I'm a student of this. Something is not adding up. And to me, what it looks like is they're trying to black this out, paint a picture that you're a lunatic, 
or a conspiracy theorist, which is why they invented the very term conspiracy theory. It came from the CIA and Central Intelligence Agency, so that you, you wouldn't take these things seriously and you wouldn't even think about them critically. All I'm asking you to do with this video is think about it critically, and then I want to hear your opinion. So is the Earth flat? The Flat Earth, Bible Truth in an Unstable World. The Earth is not a globe. Our Earth is flat. Prayerful study of any worthwhile matter and being faithful to the evidence found is the manner Father would we investigate everything. With much study behind us at WLC, we have found the globe model of the earth is wholly false. He that answereth a matter before he heareth it, it is folly and shame unto him. Proverbs 18, 13. A lifetime of deceptive information was hard to shake but with special precision, receiving the knowledge of truth is far healthier than holding emotive error learned when but a child. We pray you too will investigate the Creator's ways with an open mind and an honest heart. Truth is never afraid of the fullest investigation. David Wardlaw Scott this is no exhaustive study of the flat earth, but should encourage honest investigation into this intriguing subject. For more, please visit worldslastchance.com. According to scripture, the earth is immovable. Fear before him all the earth. The world also shall be stable, that it be not moved. 1 Chronicles 16.30 Yahuwah reigneth, he is clothed with majesty, Yahuwah is clothed with strength, wherewith he hath girded himself. The world also is established, that it cannot be moved. Psalm 93.1 Say among the heathen that Yahuwah reigneth. The world also shall be established, that it shall not be moved. Psalm 96, 10 A.B. Bless Yahuwah, O my soul. O Yahuwah, my Elohim, thou art very great. Thou art clothed with honor and majesty, who laid the foundations of the earth, that it should not be removed forever. Psalm 104, verses 1 and 5. The earth and the heavenly bodies are enclosed by the firmament. And Elohim said, Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And Elohim made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. And it was so. And Elohim called the firmament heaven, and the evening and the morning were the second day. Genesis 1, 6-8 It could not be any clearer. There is water both below the firmament and above the firmament. Praise Him, ye heaven of heavens, and ye waters that be above the heavens. Psalm 148, verse 4. The word translated as firmament here is Strong's H7549, Rakiya, which signifies the vault of heaven supporting waters above. The heavenly bodies were placed inside this firmament. 
and Elohim said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And Elohim set them in the firmament of the heaven. Genesis 1, 14 to 17. Scripture states in plain language that 1. There is water both below and above the firmament. Genesis 1, 6 to 8. 2. The heavenly bodies were placed inside the firmament. Genesis 1, 14 to 18. The firmament is inherently solid. The root word of rakia or firmament is Strong's H7554, raka, which means by analogy to expand, by hammering, by implication to overlay with thin sheets of metal. Beat, make broad, spread abroad, stamp, stretch. We conclude as the firmament holds back waters, it is solid, as if hammered out like sheet metal. Elihu, in his conversation with Job, confirms this using this very word, rakka, to express how Yahuwah spread out the sky. Hast thou with him spread out, H7554, rakka, the sky, which is strong and as a molten looking glass? Job 37, 18. This is a key passage quoting those who advocate the globe model. It is he that sitteth upon the circle of the earth, and the inhabitants thereof are as grasshoppers, that stretcheth out the heavens as a curtain, and spreadeth them out as a tent to dwell in. Isaiah 40, 22. The word circle is Strong's H2329, hug. It means circle, circuit, or compass. Under divine inspiration, Isaiah was deliberate in his word choice, not lacking a Hebrew word to describe ball as in the following. He will surely violently turn and toss thee like a ball into a large country. Isaiah 22:18. Isaiah chose to use Strong's H1754, Dur, not 2329, Hug, altogether different terms. Yahuwah sits upon the vault of the heavens above the earth and the inhabitants of earth appear as grasshoppers from this vantage point. How great he is! Father Yahuwah sits on or above the firmament. He has stretched over the earth like a tent, often found in such terms throughout the scriptures, and agrees completely with a conceptualized flat earth. Eliphaz II confirms the solid nature of the firmament when, while speaking to Job, he says, Yahuwah walks upon the Chug, Strong's H2329, used by Isaiah to note the vault of heaven. Thick clouds are a covering to him that he seeth not, and he walketh in the circuit, H2329, Chug, of heaven. H. 8064, Shamayim, Job 22, 14. Is not El in the height of heaven? H. 8064, Shamayim, and behold the height of the stars, how high they are. Job 22, 12. According to scripture, the earth is flat. We find insightful moments in Job chapter 38 as Yahuwah appears to him with many questions. One is especially telling. Hast thou perceived the breadth of the earth? Declare if thou knowest it all. 
Job 38, 18. The word breath here is Strong's H7338, Rachab, which means breath, broad or wide expanse. Yahuwah asks Job how wide the earth was. This seems a legitimate question on a flat earth, but makes little sense of a globe. The details of Nebuchadnezzar's prophetic dream in Daniel 4 also indicate a flat earth. These were the visions of my head while on my bed. I was looking and behold a tree in the midst of the earth, and its height was great. The tree grew and became strong. Its height reached to the heavens, and it could be seen to the ends of all the earth. Daniel 4, 10 and 11, the New Living Version. While this was just a dream, only on a flat earth would this be possible. Now, let us look at the return of our loving Savior. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. And the stars of heaven fell onto the earth, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs when she is shaken of a mighty wind. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. And the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bondman, and every free man, hid themselves in the dens, and in the rocks of the mountains, and said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us, and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne, and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? Revelation 6, 12 to 17. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so, amen. Revelation 1, 7. According to John the Revelator, 1. John agrees with other prophets. Stars were not larger than the earth and millions of miles away, as one star could destroy many earths. Note as well, John tells us the stars fell to the earth, not hurled to the earth. 2. The heavens will then depart like a scroll, Revelation 6.14. This is consistent with the firmament being stretched out like a curtain or tent and making no sense if the earth were a sphere. 3. Everyone on earth will see Yahushua coming in glory. Revelation 1.7 This makes perfect sense on a flat earth, but not upon a spherical earth. 4. The wicked and unrepentant will seek to hide themselves from the wrath of the Lamb and the face of him that sitteth on the throne. Revelation 6, 15 and 16. When the heavens are rolled back like a scroll, the wicked will behold the face of him who sits upon the throne above the vault of heaven and will seek to hide themselves. Scripture states, that at the second coming of Yahushua, the heavens will depart as a scroll when it is rolled together, and that every eye shall see him. See Revelation 1, 7, Revelation 6, 12 to 17. This cannot be reasonably understood given the global model of the earth. When the sky is rolled back, the wicked will behold Yahuwah upon his throne and will seek to hide from his awesome presence. It is the heavenly bodies that move, not the earth. Then spake Joshua in the sight of Israel, 
Sun, stand thou still upon Gibeon, and thou moon in the valley of Ahalan. So the sun stood still in the midst of heaven, and hasted not to go down about a whole day. Joshua 10, 12 and 13. Joshua commands the sun and moon to stand still, and the sun stood still in the midst of heaven. The earth is not told to stop spinning. Thus we must admit this passage clarity. Science vindicates a stationary earth. In Isaiah, Yahuwah caused the sun to return in the sky, causing the shadow of the sundial to move backwards. Behold, I will bring again the shadow of the degrees, which is gone down in the sundial of Ahaz, ten degrees backward. So the sun returned ten degrees, by which degrees it was gone down. Isaiah 38, 8. Isaiah believed the sun moved, not the earth. King David also believed the sun moved. The heavens declare the glory of El, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. In them hath he set a tabernacle for the sun, which is as a bridegroom coming out of his chamber, and rejoiceth as a strong man to run a race. His going forth is from the end of the heaven, and his circuit unto the ends of it, and there is nothing hid from the heat thereof. Psalm 19, 1 to 6. Yahuwah forbid we make the testimony of the prophets subservient to the theories of erring and deceitful men. It is not scripture alone which testifies to the flat earth reality. The empirical evidence is absolutely overwhelming. Evidence abounds for the honest seeker of truth. Objections on the surface seem valid, but fail miserably under close examination. World's Last Chance invites you to thoroughly study with honest heart and determined commitment to bow to the evidence wherever it leads. When pride cometh, then cometh shame, but with the lowly is wisdom. Proverbs 11, 2. Five Crushing Arguments Against Globe Earth Theory by Zetetic Flat Earth Number 1. The Earth doesn't spin 1,000 miles per hour and doesn't travel around the Sun 67,000 miles per hour. We don't feel any movement whatsoever. And this is the argument number 1 against imaginary globe Earth theory. Why? Because, first of all, air doesn't stick to a moving object, like we are being told, that the atmosphere layer magically sticks to the ground. The air goes around any moving object. And secondly, the inside of a moving car is not any good comparison to a spinning globe Earth, since it is an enclosed environment situation, protected by windows. Number 2 time-lapse videos of the stars around Polaris wouldn't be circular in motion but straight instead if the Earth was speeding around the Sun 67,000 miles per hour, since the linear speed of assumed globe Earth around the Sun is supposedly 67 times greater than spinning on its axis. Number 3 Falling stars always fall down, from top to bottom, and if the Earth was a ball traveling 67,000 miles per hour through the vast and never-ending universe, our Milky Way galaxy and beyond, as our smart astrophysicists say, then the falling stars should also fall from bottom up and across from right to left and left to right and so forth. But this never happens in real life. Number 4. 
The hot climate around equator wouldn't be there what it is right now if the Earth was a globe tilted on its axis 23.5 degrees towards the Sun. The equator should be in totally different place if the Earth was indeed a globe. Number 5. Solar analemma fits perfectly only the flat Earth model, the Gleason's map, because only in the flat Earth model the Earth is much wider below the equator. Solar analemma has two loops. The north one is small, and the southern one is five times wider, exactly like it would appear on the flat Earth map. And according to the globe Earth theory, the Earth supposedly travels around the Sun on the oval path, and this is exactly how they always show it to us, an enormous oval path. But is it? Let's look closer at the official information. The radius to the left of the Sun is called aphelion, and it is 152 million kilometers long. And the radius to the right of the Sun is called perihelion, and it is 147 million kilometers long. So the difference between them is just 6 million kilometers or 3%. So this alleged oval path is not really oval, but is a circle. It's a circle! So how could ever solar analemma have one loop five times wider than the other one if the path of the globe Earth around the Sun is in fact circular and not oval? Do you see my point here? So this solar analemma could never happen on the globe Earth model. Never ever. Whatever they tell us is a science fiction and they use 3D computer animation to persuade us to it. So how can it be science? In conclusion, these basic five things totally knock out the impossibility of the globe Earth theory. You don't need anything else. No flat horizon, no flat water, no measure of a non-existent curvature, and no NASA government conspiracy to analyze and understand those simple and basic five things. Therefore, the unrealistic globe Earth model. The Earth is flat and stationary, exactly as intended by God, created by God, and described in the Bible. End of story. Case closed.